on Law Weekly, we look yet again at issues of inadequate funding of the judiciary, especially against the background of the recent judges' conference and the speech of President Mohamedou Buhari when he declared the conference open. We have the views of a senior advocate of Nigeria, Mr. Dele Adeshino. Also on the program, lawyers react to the face-off between the EFCC and the DSS over moves by the Anti-Graft Commission to arrest the former Director General of the DSS. What especially does the law say about the powers of the Commission to effect arrest? Plus highlights from the annual ALEX Law Lecture, which had the title, Schooling Without Learning. And of course, our weekly recap of the top trending stories from the court. Hello and welcome to the program. I am Shola Shoyeli. One of the interesting things that happened during the week was the face-off that occurred when the EFCC moved to arrest the former DG of the DSS, Itai Ekpeyong, and the former head of the NIA, Mr. Ayoke. It has predictably attracted the attention of many people, including the Senate. Some lawyers have also spoken out about the extent of each agency's powers, and especially on the powers of the EFCC to effect arrest. We have a few of such views. There are laid down rules and regulations to effect an arrest. And where that has been carried out, I don't think anybody should prevent EFCC from doing their work. But the question is this, has there been a strict adherence to the strict provisions of the law? Is there a valid search warrant? It's not just about arrest warrant. Is there a valid search warrant? Once all these things have been cleared, I think everybody should submit himself for investigation. I, I would say, in the words of Casey case Wears, that be you ever so high, the law is above you. Um, whether the DG of DSS, whether the chairman of EFCC, whether the minister for defense, the chief of army staff, no matter how powerful, how high you are, uh, the law is above you. I also want to say that what we are saying is just a throwback of what this nation has, this nation has projected. Now, it's a Frankenstein monster that we have built and is collapsing on our head. Um, if the, at a point in this country, the chairman of EFCC was invited by the Senate and then he refused to go, and people were saying that the Senate could not invite him, then if the Senate, the assembly, the assemb the assemb as assembly of the people's representatives could not invite somebody who else in this country will, will invite him. Now, you see this play out every now and then because this government has indulged people too much. And then if we think it's good for the goose and it's not good for the Ganda, we are deceiving ourselves. Um, the DSS DG, whoever he is, ought to surrender himself uh, to arrest. The law gives EFC power, the power of arrest, so they can arrest, interrogate, investigate any complaint of financial crime or any offenses, money laundering, and once they are acting within the ambit of their, uh, their, 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 the law that created them, they can arrest anybody and make them to come and make account, render account and account for the activity. That's what the democracy is all about. So the, the head of a DG, the minister, if they can arrest a minister, if a secretary to the government, who is the DG? What the DG has no immunity under our law. So you just say uh, one of those uh, we, we have not recovered from a militarized democracy. Uh, and so people believe that they are, wherever you are, you have authority above the law. But it doesn't have any such power. 